Good day everyone, my name's Jonah and I'm going to be starting a little devlog series here, tracking my progress making an auto chess RPG game set in space using the Godot game engine. So just to introduce myself a little bit, I live in New Zealand, which is where I'm studying software engineering at the moment. For fun, I thought it would be a good idea to vlog this series and show you a bit of an insight into how I go about my weeks developing this project on the side of my studies and as a way to track my progress. So I thought I would give a quick explanation of what an auto chess game is. Normally you just have a board. And so you can normally place your pieces in this part of the board and the other team can put theirs in here. And then you'll have like a little toolbar at the bottom where you keep your pieces. Here, one uh, kind of old garlic, that's the other team. Here this, this moldy lemon is our units, right? So what you can do at the beginning of the round is you place your units here, then you start the round and you find out that the other teams put a uh, moldy garlic over there and then your rotten uh, lemon will automatically attack by moving around the field in some kind of a way like it just figures its own way out until they find an opponent to fight here and then these guys will fight it out until you'll beat the onion uh, you'll beat the garlic not the onion and then you deal damage based on how many units you have left and then your opponent's health drops right you also have health. Now, at the end of the round, you have money that you gain based on winning. You have your units, which are sitting in here. Now, your units have levels, right? You might have a level 1 unit and a level 2 unit. Generally, they get better the more levels you have. And then you might also have some items on the side that you can put into the units, right? As you can see, this is very square-based, right? And it's quite boring, in my opinion. I don't want to make something like this. So what I thought I'd do is use the same kind of core mechanics of the tile system but make it so that you can have tiles placed in a more interesting manner. Maybe this is some kind of weird building so it's got some texture around it but then you could just place enemies be in this part of the map and then your units start down here somewhere and then they'll be able to fight with a slightly different shape and you can have many different maps that you make however you want because I just don't want to have this simple system of having a boring grid. So that's pretty much what I'm working on at the moment is making a system that lets me make maps that are shaped more like this and less like this. But the underlying system will still be kind of similar the way that the units behave and stuff. Alright, so I thought I'd show you what I've got so far. So here we've got a demo of the tile system in action. Now you'll notice that everything is very bland. These are just placeholder rectangles, so I do intend to make sprites in the future, but for now I'm just kind of starting on the functionality of the engine underneath. So you'll notice that I can lay out tiles here in a regular pattern, how normal games do that these days, and that works just as you'd expect. You can see when the game starts that the players and the enemies start moving around. Currently it's the enemies that can deal damage and the players can't deal damage, but that's not really hard to change. I just had it in that like that so I could see what it looks like for a team to get completely wiped out. Now moving on, you can see here that I've made some a little bit more interestingly shaped boards. Uh, again, I can just drag players out onto these boards and when I start the game, they know automatically what piece they're on. So I don't need to set that programmatically anywhere. You know, I don't need to spawn them in in any way. I can just paint a board really with this tile system. If I play the scene here, you can see that the pathfinding follows the rules of the board that I've made. They just behave like you'd expect and move to the neighboring tiles. So I like to play around with this a little bit and make some kind of oddly shaped maps like this one here and just see how the pieces behave when they're moving around in it. So the way I've done this is just using Godot's built-in collision system to give all tiles kind of like feeler colliders around them to detect what tiles they're placed next to. Now this allows them to automatically link themselves up with their neighbors and know who's around them without me having to ever really declare that to them manually. This is really why you can paint these maps so easily and just press play. So that's all for now. In the future videos, I'm going to start talking about the architecture of the gameplay loop itself. And I'll obviously have to get some sprites in here as well. So if you enjoy this or want to follow along, please subscribe and I'll make more of these videos soon. Thanks for watching.